Rings with no regard for human life. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup. Oh, blocked by James. LeBron James with the rejection. Irving and Curry, one on one. Irving puts it up. It's good. Kyrie Irving from downtown. And the Cavaliers by three. Shot clock is down to five. Bryant goes to work. Bryant the drive. Oh! Inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! All right, guys. I hope you're ready. This is we're back here. Internet undefeated. Yours truly, the best co-host out there. Clutchville NBA airhead commentator and Maddox 730. Say what up? What What's up? up? You already know. And we have a jam-packed app for you guys today. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on, and we're going to jump right into it. So we woke up today, or I should say an uh, NBA player woke up today and saw a whole city lobbying for him. LeBron James saw that there was a billboard in Philadelphia pitching him to come join the team when he's a free agent in the next season. Absolutely. Everybody woke up seeing different billboards with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and LeBron right next to him. You know, I don't I don't know the last time we've seen something like this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably the last time LeBron was a free agent and every city was, was pitching for him to come. Now they're talking about complete the process mm -hmm. is, is, is what the billboard's reading. So what was LeBron's response to that, Airhead commentator? What was his take? He was flattered and thought that it was dope. Uh, you know, having quote. these billboards, yep, having these billboards out for him. I mean, honestly, I don't think there's any chance that he's going to Philly, but it is cool coming up. You know, he definitely should feel flattered and and uh, definitely feel wanted by a team. <laughs> That's uh -oh. pretty awesome. Uh oh. Most definitely, it's going to be uh, real interesting in this offseason and see how many people try to get in on the LeBron sweepstakes that always goes on every time this comes around. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong. I definitely think him. And Bead and Simmons would be a great, great big three to watch, but I don't think. Uh, you don't think it's don't going down? It, I don't think it's going down. No chance. That would be a dangerous team, though. It definitely would. I'm saying it would definitely be good to uh, see those three play, even with Fultz, see what he could bring to the table, um, you know, with those three big name stars on the team. But they are, I don't think he's going. They are hiding Fultz away in the cut. They're training him away. Let's see what he come, comes out looking like whenever they, they finally let him hit the floor with them again. Absolutely. Yeah. But, um, all right, keeping it moving here. Next up on the docket, we got Kawhi Leonard now finally announcing that he's – not only working out with the team, the Spurs again, but talking about coming back as early as when? March. March. So reports do suggest that he is uh, resuming workouts with the Spurs and is planning a return in March. But I, I mean, I'm sure if he comes back in March, it will be on restricted minutes. And I'm sure he won't play back-to-back -back games. I don't think he's 100% healthy, and I think he knows he's not 100% healthy. So I... I don't think that this is going to do really anything. I don't think this is going to be a shakeup that people want it to be or think it's going to be oh. with the conference. I don't. I, I called this in a, you know, a couple podcasts ago that this is exactly what the plan was. Keep this superstar fresh right before the playoffs. Everybody else is going to be tired, and this man's going to play like Michael Jordan. <laughs> but mark my words. I wouldn't I think, be surprised. Do you think, do you think that he – they have a chance to upset the Warriors or the Rockets in this playoffs this year. No, I don't. As I just mentioned, he's going to be playing on restricted minutes, meaning he's not going to be playing to his full potential in these games. So with that being said, I don't think that it's going to do much changing to the play come See, playoff time. I think that we don't know. See, the, the, the X factor is, you know, the element of surprise. We don't know mm -hmm. how much work. Kawhi's really no one really knows what shape he's in. Let's say right. let's say he's pulling the ill okie doke on everybody and he's yep. ninety percent right now. Imagine what would happen if a fresh Kawhi came off and yeah, he doesn't go crazy in March, but he gets his legs back. He has a whole thirty days to get ready for April time playoffs plus get his rhythm back. And I think they're definitely a threat to the Spurs in general because 
the the Spurs just beat good teams. They have the best coach probably in the NBA right now. A lot of people would say um, Greg Popovich and Dejounte Murray, Kyle Anderson. <laughs> Um, you know, a couple of these young guys really stepping up big time for them, and they still have LaMarcus Aldridge and Pau Gasol. Mm -hmm. And Patty Mills. Don't forget about Patty Mills. Danny they Green. got Ginobili, Parker. They got the Ginobili. It, it's, it's almost a, a fully deep roster. So if you, you know, you add another element to that of Kawhi Leonard I'm and he gives them right now, the way anything. Aldridge, the way Aldridge is playing right now, I always thought that they could be a one-two punch like a Kobe and Shaq. They have Gasol. Uh, Popovich and Aldridge had their little thing last year. Aldridge wasn't playing to full potential. He's letting them play, not coaching them as much. So he's playing more freely. I think it's going to be... So if the series started today, I'm so if the series right started now. today, you would put your money on San Antonio over the Warriors That's what you or the Rockets? Not if it started today, but being that he's coming back in March, he's going to have time to get his legs back, and he's going to be fully, fully charged when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah, I, so. with that, that Kawhi team then, you expect, not today, but Kawhi team in April, you expect them to uh, to take down the Warriors? I expect them to be contenders, yes. All right, you heard it here first. Maddox on record. I had to get it from him. So, uh, I, you know, me personally, I think that they're just they're going to be make it really interesting. But the majority of the cast is either too young or too old or not ready enough. Marcus Aldridge, I think he's epic and he definitely could be a backbone franchise player. But when it comes to the likes of the Warriors shooting, I would like to see they're going to need it from everybody. It's not going to be a one or a two guy thing. You're going to need it from everybody to keep up with the Warriors. So you're talking Danny Green and Patty Mills and and two young guys, Dejounte Murray and uh, Kyle Anderson, that they get a lot of offense from. Let's see if they could do that in the playoffs. You know, before before Zaza put cheap shot ended <laughs> ended the playoffs for the Spurs last year. Oh boy, oh, come how on. much were they up on the Warriors? Come Was it twenty on. points. Do you, do, you, do you know what Steph what is, is famous for doing points? in the third quarter? Do you know what Stephen Curry is famous for doing? The Warriors lead the NBA by far in third quarter margin of victory, okay? Because so, they have their little break 20, during halftime. By half 20 time. points? Yeah, by All more. Right. By more than that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Look it up. We'll, we'll see so, this year what happens. What a, so, what a healthy so, guy. So speaking of uh, – threats to the, the Warriors and the Rockets that we're seeing, we know what, what the Spurs are going to do. The Rockets are on top of the NBA right now and they have been for a, quite some time, a couple of weeks if I'm not mistaken. They sure are. What? They have a four, so the Rockets are 47 wins, 13 loss uh, record Ooh. right now. So the number one in the league. Uh, with the Warriors right not too far behind, 47 wins and 14 losses. Thank you very so much. The, the, so the Rockets do have, a, right now, a 13-winning streak. Uh-oh. Mm. But I think in order to stay number one, they really can't afford to even lose one game because if they lose one game, that could change yep. really everything. Absolutely. The Warriors are literally a half game behind them. Do you, so, guys, uh, do you guys think that the Rockets are going to keep it up or the Warriors are going to get back to their number one spot? I mean, you Warriors. have the days you have. I'm a Warriors fan. You know, don't ever forget that. But the way that uh, James Harden and Chris Paul are playing is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, okay. I, they could <laughs> rival them. But, you know, um, the Western Conference, James Harden, He's really stepped it up, man. You know, he should have been MVP last year. And um, now with Chris Paul here, he's he's somehow still playing at an MVP caliber with another superstar mm -hmm. on the yep. roster. It's really amazing to see him doing this. You know, tops in the NBA in assist again. And it's just, you know, really remarkable to see somebody that can create a shot like this make everybody else around him so much better and have a pace and a record like this with the Warriors. With that being said, Clint Capella, Backbone of their defense, um, you know, they got some other guys in there mixing it up. Uh, Trevor Ariza just came back from injury. I'd like to say that I think they could finish out number one, but the Warriors, man, um, they got everybody, and they're fine-tuning for another playoff, uh, not a playoff, a finals run. So yep. I'd have to bet on the uh, the reigning champs here. Yeah. Take that number yeah. one seed. Me too. I mean, the Rockets play the Clippers. Um, tonight, 1030. Is that going to be an easy win? Probably. Um, 
but you know, Chris Paul's going we'll back see. to play. The I mean, huh? I mean, imagine, imagine you won fourteen games in a row, and you're literally not even one full game ahead of your rival. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That tells you something. That means you know. I believe that the Warriors we're right are going on back the heels. The first spot. We're right on their heels. Exactly. Um, just you know. We'll see. I mean, of course, people get tired. People get tired. They're on their third to win. Yeah, it's a marathon. You know, it's definitely, you know, I'm rooting for the Rockets. Let's go Rockets. You know, let me see a different type of, um, comp, you know, final. Now, we just, we just mentioned some real top heavy hitters uh, on the Rockets there and on the Warriors, um, uh, any of which could easily be uh, MVP candidates this year. Who will be the MVP of this season right here, right now, guys? Take, take your pick for today. Who's who's gonna go first? If the season ended today, well, you know we always gotta let the ladies go first. I mean, for me, it's not even going to be a huge, huge name, but for me, it would definitely be Anthony Davis because right now he's averaging forty-one points per game, and this is without <laughs> Cousins. No, and this is without whoa, whoa. Cousins. That's that's for a stretch. That's for yeah. what, like the last ten games, I think, or something. Since, like, since eight, Cousins, okay. has, since cousins it, has left, right? Uh, yeah, so he's averaging forty-one point five points per game and fourteen rebounds per game. So I want to tie this into Skip Bayless. Let's bring up Skip Bayless just for one second. So Skip Bayless came out saying that he feels Anthony Davis is overrated. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Skip with the hot take again. Yes, I want to just say a couple of things. So I don't know how someone, if someone who's averaging one point per game, if his, um, if that, if anything he says is accounted for. Then my 20 points per game, five rebounds, and three blocks on 2K18 should definitely account for something. And uh, so let me reintroduce myself huh. as the airhead commentator on Internet Undefeated on 730 Radio. Let him know. I definitely think Anthony Davis is not overrated. He's playing without Cousins, averaging 41 points per game, as I mentioned, 14 rebounds per game. He's doing it. And let me tell you, you know me. I'm, I am I am wholeheartedly for the team playing. And he's not just the only one putting in the work. We also have Drew Holiday. Okafer with 14 points. And this, and this is just in last night's game. So with Okafer with 14 points, Holiday with 20 points, uh, Marotic with 10 points. So everyone's touching the ball. And then, of course, Ronda with six points. But everyone is touching the ball. And making this happen for him. And they have six straight wins. And I think they're fifth or in the West, sorry, in the West yeah. right now. So they're uh, not right. too shabby. I got to co-sign that. I got to co-sign that. They're deeper than a lot of people thought. Etuan Moore, um, you know, you said Drew Holiday, you know, um, even Rondo making a lot of plays, even when he's not scoring. I think he had 12 assists um, in the second to last game. So he gets really hot making the offense flow for them. And it gets really, you know, it just makes it even harder for people to try to defend Anthony Davis. And that's how he goes off for, I mean, 50 points in a game without a three pointer only player in the last 10 years to do that. He is truly and, special. And, and he, and this year he's only going to be 25 years old. I mean, come on, it's so, ridiculous. And he has exactly. 17 rebounds and five blocks in the game. It seems he like he's just, be. It seems like he's just playing around with these guys right now. So imagine what this man could do in a 10-year stretch. Or imagine if Cousins was healthy. I mean, oh, he definitely should be part of the MVP talks. He definitely should be a part of it. Skip Bayless, put some respect Especially on his Especially for name. putting this team on his back. <laughs> They're on a winning streak. You put the team on as one of the best players in the NBA. Went and down. And, it's, and if you don't know, they were a six seed in the West the day that uh, Cousins went down, and they're currently a fifth seed, if I'm not mistaken. I know Portland uh, is playing tonight, and that's the team behind them. So I'm not sure. This is a live recording. The Portland was live when we started this at. Uh, they were finishing up with Sacramento. It looked like they had that win in the bag. But uh, I'm not sure if their win tonight puts them back over the Pelicans because let me tell you, I can't say that there's a race any tighter than what they've got going on out there in the West right now. It's, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's um, true. It's a dog fight. I Everybody's mean, the East, like one, one game, you know, different. Yeah, for like the whole three to the – no, yeah, what is it? The four, Yeah, the three to the nine seed – isn't even separated by a total of four games. 
All right. So, you know, it's anybody's race right there. You can't afford to lose. You lose two, three, somebody else win two, three. You're not even in the playoffs anymore. That's how the yep. Western Conference is right now. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much not, not very different in the East this year either. We got Detroit. They've been slipping, you know, a little bit after they came out the gates with the Blake Dr Griffin trade. But uh, Miami gained some more ground on them tonight uh, coming even I think if not, maybe even ahead when these standings get updated uh, of Philly on wins in the standings for the eighth seed in the East. Uh, speaking of which, I know we, we went, don't want to jump ahead here, but Dwayne Wade went nuts in that game to make that happen. But let's uh, bring rein it back in real quick. Next up on the docket, what do you guys think about the NCAA taking advantage of these college players, not letting them make a dollar? I mean, they're investigating – all these guys for mm -hmm. the amounts of money that they made, putting them through the ringer, potentially, you know, getting them in hot water when okay. they're making billions and billions a year and, and, and NBA players are now being forced to speak out against it. Yep. LeBron came out today saying that, you know, the NCAA is corrupt, you know, so. Damn, doesn't get more straight than that. So let me ask you this, guys, and, and uh, this is honest questions. So these college players feel – this is what's going on, and correct me if I'm wrong. These college players feel they should be paid for playing basketball. Is, is that right? Yeah, compensated in some form besides, okay. you know, tuition. Meal ticket. Now, okay, now listen, which – okay, everyone has their own opinions on this, but this is just my opinion and my question. Okay, they're going to school, right, for an education, and they're playing for the school's team. So why should they feel that they should be compensated for paying for playing an extracurricular activity? It's well, not like they're being forced to play on the team. This is what they want to do. They're going to college to learn. Mm -hmm. They have a major and they're playing basketball. These players so are they're, recruited. They're, they're getting players, free education. Of course right? they're recruited. These, they're recruited they're because they, they want them right now. If I go out there in any thing that a regular student is not required to do, and I risk my health. I break my leg, my arm. Does anybody care about me and what happens to me for the rest of my life? But is that something that you chose to do or is that something are, that you're being forced do to do? Do you have a major while you're doing that? Yeah, you have a major you while you're doing that. You have a major. That. You're going to school. This, but, To me, it's more so like if I'm going to high school and I wanted to be on any type of, of a sports team, I would not seek compensation because it's an extracurricular activity. Now, someone who's recruited to a team, I understand that they're recruited because they're good and they're talents and they want them to, to represent, to represent their, school. their school. Okay, I so understand, but why, why should do you, you want be big compensated thing here for that if you're – if you're going to school to learn. So you're going to market me and put me on television and make me risk my life because I can get injured and break my neck every but, day. And I shouldn't, what, and I shouldn't but, be compensated at all, even though you're going to market me and make billions. Off these of schools are but, making millions and billions of dollars. And I understand that. And you I know, understand that. Um, but whose sales, choice is it TV to go deals. to that school? No, if you think that sounds like a good deal, I don't know. I mean, I must be crazy. I mean, whose choice <laughs> is it to go to that school though?